Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be prepping two of the larger ammonites I found during my fossil hunting trips a few weeks ago. So these ammonites have been crushed but with their original shells preserved so they're, they can look really stunning when preserved correctly. Now I'm not a professional when it comes to prepping my fossils but I'm trying to learn. So I'm going to give it a go with some dental tools and sharp scalpels to get the excess matrix off of the ammonite shell. Um, so I thought I would take you guys with it, you know, film a before shot just in case there is no after. It can go like that sometimes. But before I jump into the prep I thought I'd show you what ammonites looked like when they were alive. So I've got this lovely model here which shows what ammonites actually looked like when they were living in our seas. So as you can see, they weren't, a lot of people think they were, you know, snails or something, but they were actually mollusks with these kind of squid-like heads coming out of them. So this is what they look like. And you can see, this is the shell we find today when fossil hunting. And that's because that's the hard part of the creature. The tentacles and everything, that's the soft part. So other creatures may have eaten it. It may have rotted away. Um, so that's why we tend to find the hard parts of creatures rather than the soft parts. It's not impossible to find the soft parts, but they're exceptional cases. And now the other thing I wanted to mention is you can see I've got a big ammonite and a little ammonite here, and that's because I wanted to showcase that female ammonites were the larger ones and male ammonites were the smaller ones. So within species this is. So imagine these are the same species. This could be the female and this could be the male. So the males were a lot smaller in size. So when I uh, prep the larger one, I'll show you it in a minute, I'll also show you a smaller version of the same species just because I think it's kind of cool how there's such a size difference between the genders. I'll move my camera onto the ones I'm working on and you guys can have a look. This is the larger ammonite I'm going to be working on. So as you can see, it's quite big, but all this kind of dark grey rock here is actually on top of the ammonite. So I should be able to flick it all off to reveal the white shell beneath and you can see all the ribbing coming through. So hopefully, it's all there waiting and then I'll put a layer of paraloid over the top just to secure it in place and I do have the piece that belongs here. I haven't decided if I'm going to stick it back on yet because the piece I have is actually the bottom shell here. So as you can see it's got the bottom shell and the top shell because it was crushed so the ammonite's paper thin but it actually has both layers. So I don't know if you guys can see that. So you've got one layer, two layer. So I thought that'd be quite cool. Now this one is of a species Wainerocerus. Um, don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but this one would have been a female because it's much larger than the male one. So I did find a male one, I just need to find it. It's in one of my many bags, so it might not be in this video, but I'll see what I can do. <laughs> So I thought I'd do a progress update because I'm not doing a time lapse. I thought I would show you it in installments. So I've managed to expose most of the ribbing, as you can see, but there's still a lot to come off. So I think another few hours should do on this one because it's quite an intricate one and all of it's coming off in tiny little pieces rather than a nice lift off. But we're getting there so i just thought i would update you guys and let me know in the comments if you would be interested in seeing me prep ammonites like this in a time lapse form i don't know what's easier to watch whether you know just jump jumping to the different you know stages of prep or whether you want to watch it from start to finish so let me know what you'd prefer but well, that's what it looks like so far this is what it looks like now and I think it's changed quite a lot from what it looked like before. Um, it has taken me quite a lot of time so I underestimated just how long it would take to prep this piece because a lot of the big you know excess rock came off very quickly and then the problem I'm having is actually with the tiny bits in between like the ribs and everything they are taking forever to get off but I want to do this properly because I think it's such a beautiful piece and I think with the paraloid on top it will just look amazing but I don't want to have something underneath the paraloid that will just annoy me so I want to try and get as much of the grey off of the shell of the fossil as I can but I know it's not possible to get it all off and the middle of this fossil is proving to be really tricky to get out um, you can see the ribs are all there but they're so fine so they're finer than my scalpel so it's really hard for me to actually remove the rock without damaging the ribs so I've decided to leave it there for now until I can do it a bit safer but this is where we're at currently so I think a few more hours on this piece and then it will probably be ready for paraloid. 
So before I do any more work to it, I thought I would show you guys a better view of it all just in case I destroy it um, in my final attempts to clean it. But I, the outer whirl here, this is actually the bottom piece of shell. So the top shell was a bit too damaged, so I decided to take a risk and actually go through the top shell and reveal this bottom shell, which I think looks really nice. Um, because it would be nice just like that without the outer whirl, but I think... I want to keep the fact that it was a much bigger ammonite than it kind of looks like because that would almost be a perfect ammonite if I did that to it but let me know what you think but I think keeping it as it's meant to be is the better better idea and then you can see there's an I spotted another little ammonite here So I've put some of the paraloid in this glass jar and poured some acetone over the top. So I'm doing quite a concentrated solution to start with and then I'll dilute it further once these granules have dissolved. So it'll probably take overnight to dissolve. But I will check back in the morning and we can see what it's doing. But it kind of looks quite pretty, I think, anyway. They're kind of sparkling, but I think it's going to take all night to dissolve according to what I've read. So let's wait and see. Okay, so it's the morning after, that kind of sounds a bit wrong, but the paraloid is dissolved in the acetone, so this is what my solution looks like. So I think it's already dilute enough to put on my fossils, I'm not sure, I've never done this before, so it's a bit of a trial and error whether it's going to be too thick or not, so I've got a few test pieces here to try it on first. So this is a lovely fragment of a big crushed ammonite found at the same location as the big pieces I'm working on but imagine like you can kind of see the colors in this one I don't know if my camera's gonna pick it up like it's really pretty so I thought I'd quite like to keep this piece but obviously it needs some paraloid on it as well so I'm gonna trial it on that one and then I've also got this little guy here which is very delicate but it's the male version of the big one I'm cleaning up so I thought that'd be quite nice to have with it because the males and females, there was such a drastic size difference and I just love it. Um, but sadly the middle of this one did not survive. You can just, just see it there. But hopefully with a bit of paraloid it will be nice. So I haven't managed to get all the, you know, excess rock out of all the grooves because this is so delicate. If I even like put an ounce of pressure like on it, I'm just going to snap right through this. Like, look. It is wafer thin, or paper thin, I don't know what the right phrase is, but it's one of those. So, yeah, if this is too thick, I'm just going to dilute it with some more acetone. I, de I was meant to make this in two parts, so the video you saw before this part of my video last night, when I made it, I was trying to, I accidentally got a bit heavy handed with the acetone and poured way more in than I was planning on. So I was planning on making a really thick solution and then diluting it further today, but um, that didn't happen, we just went for it last night, so it looks about right though. There's no granules left in it, you can kind of see the gluey sort of jelly inside. I really don't know the right vocabulary here, do I? But we're going to try it, so I'm going to move my camera down, we're going to do two test runs and then we'll put it on the big one. But the big one... I've gi I haven't given up, but I'll show you in a minute. I can't get every piece of grey off of the shell. It is just... I, I've spent days working on this and it's Fossil Friday. It has to be done now. Like, it just has to. But yeah, I think it looks nice. I don't want to risk ruining it by, you know, get, really, you know, getting these tiny pieces off. So I think I'm going to leave it as it is. So I'm going to move this one out the way for a minute, but this is what it's kind of looking like at the moment. So I think it looks fabulous and I don't want to risk doing too much to it. So I'm just going to put it down there. So I'd much rather, less is more, like with this um, paraloid solution, it's reversible with the acetone. So the way I see it is if down the line I have a few days spare, I can reverse the paraloid and then I can, you know, redo it. So that's my sort of goal 
I'm gonna open it. Oh god, I don't know why I just sniffed it, but it does smell very strong. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use this paintbrush, I think. I brought like a load of paintbrushes just in case they all dissolve on me or go funny. Never done this before, so we're just gonna we're just gonna try. I might use this one because it's a bit finer, so here goes nothing. We're just painting it on. Oh, it looks nice. Have I put too much on? I don't know how quickly this stuff's meant to dissolve, uh, dissolve, um, dry. I'm just coating it. I might literally just be coating this fossil in acetone, which probably won't be the best idea. But these are my test runs, so we're gonna, we're just trying it. So I'm gonna let that side dry, so we'll see how that looks. I mean it is, it's sticky-ish, so I'm actually going to try and see if it works as a glue. So on this piece I'm going to glue on the back a little white piece of shell that came off a different fossil so that it kind of, I'm going to cheat and make it look like it's whole. So I'm just going to put it, put it under the middle bit there so it doesn't have a hole there. So let's try this bit, let's take some of the gooey bit, oh that's way too much gooey bit. Interesting. Is it actually going to dissolve? I mean, it's been dissolving for well over the time frame. Like, it's been kind of like 15 hours, I think. So it should be fine. Right, let's try this. Put in some glue on this one. Oh, it's already like going funny. And now we're just going to stick you on. Just like that. I mean, it looks exactly how I want it to look. So promising. Oh, and I am wearing my slippers. I really shouldn't wear them in the garage, but I just can't help it. <laughs> I think it feels. I'm worried it's all like setting. Oh, now I've got it all around the rim of the jar. This is going well. Right, let's now just paint a layer of this on the back just to give it some more support. So this is the back of this one. La la la. So we can let that on there. Hey, this one's already like dry. So that's what I don't know if I'm meant to touch it already, but look, that's what that one looks like. That's kind of perfect, I think. That's you know, definitely done a nice varnish sort of effect. I hope that's holding together the surface as well because I want it to be a consolidant. So I think, I think I've managed it. So we're now going to put some on the big one. I've decided we're just gonna use how it is because these ones have actually turned out really nice. Um, so I'm just gonna use the top layer of whatever is in this jar and hope it does what I need it to do. So I'm just gonna put it on the fossil, not on any of the surrounding rock, just because I think I think that's what I'm meant to do, so that's how we're going to do it. But I haven't got every single bit of rock off of this fossil. I've done a pretty good job, but you can see right in the grooves, there's like there's like the odd bit in the grooves, and I've just decided it's safer to leave them on. I think the overall kind of look of this fossil is turning out really lovely, so I've decided to leave it as it is. So I'm going to put some paraloid over all of this shell and then afterwards I may add the side bit of shell here but after I've done the first layer of paraloid I think. So I know I just said I was going to add this bit after but I've got the pieces here so I'm just going to see how they sort of look like whether they fit nicely or whether I'm not sure they're going to work. I think it looks nicer just as it is but we can have a go. So I think where does this piece go? I think it there. That one fits. Like that. So that one doesn't have anything on it. I think I might be missing this section here, unfortunately. I cannot make it fit. 
so I think I'm gonna leave that for now and if I'm gonna keep the pieces carefully and I can always add them on at a later date because I quite like how it looks at the moment so before I put the Paraloid on, I am just going to brush the surface of the shell just to make sure there are no bits on it because they will be stuck on it until I choose not to. So the way I see this Paraloid is because it's a really good, like museums even use this because it doesn't yellow at all, it's reversible. So if at a later date I want to redo this one, I, I can. So I'm not, I'm not too worried if it goes completely pear shaped as long as I'm careful. So, I think that's good. And my specimens, they're completely dry, so they shouldn't go cloudy at all. Right, this is getting exciting. Okay, so I'm just mixing it a little bit and I've got my paintbrush at the ready. I'm trying not to stick all my fingers together, but I don't think it's a very strong glue because I've diluted it so much. So I'm just gonna dip it in. And let's do this. I don't know if there's a right or wrong technique when applying this, but we're just going to do it like this. I think I'm going to use my bigger paintbrush. I think it's quite a big fossil. This is what it looks like. So this is with one coat of my Paraloid solution and it's just given it a bit more pizzazz really, like it just stands out better. So I think I might put another one on, I'm not sure if I'm meant to, but I'll wait till you guys give me a bit of advice before I go putting another one on because I don't know if this, it feels like it's dry, but it might not be fully dry so I don't know whether to wait. But there you have it that's what it looks like i'm so happy with this like look how big it is <laughs> it's amazing but i don't think i'm going to put the edge bit on here because i love how the middle worlds look but i will keep the pieces and maybe i'll clean up the pieces on their own and then decide because obviously they don't look as nice as the cleanup job i've done so maybe that's why i don't like the look of them but let me know what you think should i add the other pieces on or leave them off but this is the finished product and then i've also varnished or consolidated, I don't, paraloided, don't know the right vocabulary here, the, um, it's focusing on my ammonite, wait, is it gonna focus? There you go. I've varnished the other side of this ammonite fragment, don't know if it's focusing for you, maybe if I hold it here, hello, there you go, and I think it's turned out really nice, you can see the colours in it, I'm trying to get it so the light can show you, so I'm really happy with how that turned out. And then I've also varnished the top of this piece. So it's got some strength on the back because I put a layer on the back and now on the front. And I, I like how the white looks in the centre. I think it just doesn't show that there was even a hole there. But I love the fact that these are the same species. And this is the man, this is the woman. So these are Wainerocerus ammonites. Wainerocerus. It's a bit of a hard one to pronounce that one <laughs> and I'm not good at pronouncing words at the best of times so yeah that's the finished look. That's today's video I really do hope you enjoyed this kind of follow me along the prep process vid um I've never really prepped fossils before like properly you know I've cleaned them a little bit but I've not you know never used paraloid before I've never had to like flake off so much excess rock to reveal the ammonite so I'm really happy with how this has turned out and I didn't destroy them which is amazing but I am open to any tips you guys may have um obviously I don't have much experience with this stuff but I think you know I think it's worked so 
Yeah, I wasn't sure with my um, Paraloid solution, it got so gluey at the base and I was like, oh no, is it not like it's separated, is it still going to work? But it seems to have done the job, so no, I'm very chuffed. But thank you so much for watching, I'll link my Instagram down below if you'd like to see some more close-up pictures of these and just other general pictures of me, you know. But um, that'll all be linked down below, but thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.